Let's do a deep dive into this fascinating entity we call time. We are talking about that 24-7, 365 days a year kind of time that we all have. But how we use it? Ah, that is the million dollar question. How do we make the most of this precious commodity that seems to tick away faster than a teenager texting their crush? I've got a way for you to think about it that is so simple, it's like a four-piece puzzle. Not one of those thousand-piece puzzles with all the little tiny bits that look the exact same. Nope. This is an easy-peasy, anyone-can-do-it kind of puzzle. I call it the Riggs Time Quadrant. Yeah, I know it sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, but it's not. It's more like the decoder ring to the secret language of time management. All right, so RIGS, what does it stand for? R-I-G-S. R is for recover. I is for invest. G is for gamble. And S is for spend. These are the four ways we can spend or use our time. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? But stick with me because we're going to shake it up a little bit and discuss it in the order of spend, invest, gamble, and recover. First up, we've got spend. Spending our time is like going on a shopping spree at your favorite mall. But instead of cash, you're splashing out with minutes and hours. It's about seizing the moment for immediate gratification, enjoying the right here and now. Maybe you're hanging out with your crew, diving into a juicy novel, or carving up the dance floor like you're auditioning for Dancing with the Stars. It is time spent purely for the pursuit of of joy, laughter, and creating unforgettable moments right now. Next, we have invest. This is kind of like the Warren Buffett of time usage. It's all about playing the long game. You are putting your time into activities that may not give you instant pleasure, but they are going to pay off big time down the road. It is like planting seeds that will grow into a lush garden of success. You're hitting the books, breaking a sweat in the gym, or pouring your energy into your work. It might be tough in the moment, but you are building a brighter future. This is delayed gratification. Then there's gamble. This is when you're kind of tossing your time into activities that come with a big question mark. Meaning, you're not sure if this will actually be a worthwhile way to spend your time. But, you know, you're going to go ahead and roll the dice anyway. Let's say you've been binging some TV show for five hours straight. And you're thinking, yeah, I think I'll sit here for another five hours binge watching. You might have moderately enjoyed some of the plot twists and cliffhangers in the moment... But at the end of the day, you'll probably feel like you wasted precious hours that you could have been spending more wisely. That doesn't necessarily mean working, it just means doing something that you're not going to regret at the end of the day. Finally, we have recover. This is the time you spend refueling your energy tank. It is like a pit stop, a well-deserved break. Grab a quick nap, take a leisurely stroll, chat with friends over a cup of coffee, or even sneak in a mini vacation to refresh your mind and body. It is all about recharging your batteries so you can jump back in to the invest quadrant with renewed vigor. Now, 
You may be wondering, where exactly do my activities fit into these quadrants? Great question. And the answer is as unique as you are. Your personal preferences, your likes and dislikes are the key to where you put each activity. For example, let's talk video games. Now, for some of you, playing video games might just feel like throwing time into a black hole. It's just a void you're never going to get anything back from. It might feel like you're playing roulette with your precious hours. You know, if you kind of moderately enjoy it, you're like, eh, maybe I'll regret it, maybe I won't. If either of those describe you, then gaming would slide right into that gambling quadrant, meaning you don't know if this is going to be regretful or not. But wait, what's that I hear? Some of you absolutely love blasting aliens or racing cars in the digital world. For you folks, video games are more like a tropical vacation for your mind. A tropical vacation, in which case you're going... I mean, is that how video games... If that's the case for you, and you love video games, and that's how you want to spend your free time, then gaming leaps over into the spend quadrant. But we're not done yet. There is a second layer to this, people. We're going deep. And that's the dimension of duration. Duration spent on activities can shift it from one quadrant to the other. Take a side business, for example. Let's say you're making homemade soaps, and you absolutely love it. You got your day job, but then you're putting in five hours a week on your side hustle. And it feels like a passion project. It provides instant gratification. You are enjoying it and loving it while you're doing it. So, it's chillin' in this spend quadrant. You are receiving immediate gratification. But, say you start making some sales, and you quit your day job, and now you're making soap 60 hours a week. Ooh, unless you have some weird, strange addiction to making soap, you're likely going to feel a lot less fun and immediate gratification, and it's going to start feeling a lot more like work, as pretty much anything you do 60 hours a week is going to not be as fun anymore and going to feel more like work. Then it moves into the invest quadrant. So the amount of time you spend on something can change which quadrant it belongs in. But hey, life is not always black and white, and sometimes activities can straddle multiple quadrants simultaneously. Instead of absolutes, think about percentages. Picture this. It's lunchtime on a busy workday. You've been working hard. Whew, you need a break. You're craving a 30-minute break to recharge. You're like, that's what I need. I need 30 minutes to chill out with a friend and have some lunch. You meet up with your coworker for lunch. One thing leads to another. Not in that way. But all of a sudden, a half hour goes by and you're still talking. And you end up having lunch for a whole hour. So, how do you categorize this lunch break? Well, the first 30 minutes were all about recovery. You needed that time, you took that time, that is recovery time. But you decided to stay for another 30 minutes. You were already recovered, but you still stayed. So you can't put that last 30 minutes in the recovery quadrant. If this was not a strategic networking lunch, you really shouldn't put it in the investment quadrant. So it's a toss-up between the spending and gambling quadrants. If you truly cherished the extra moments with your friend and you do not regret it at all, then hey, the last 30 minutes goes in the spending quadrant. 
But if you're thinking to yourself, oh, yeah, I mean, I really didn't need that time. It was fun, yeah, but I really should have been working and I was kind of just more looking for an excuse to not work. Well, then, my friend, that last 30 minutes goes in the gambling quadrant. Let's get practical now. How do you apply the Riggs time quadrant to your life? It is as easy as a hot and ready cooked pie. So let's just slice right into that bad boy. Step one, you've got to decide how much time you want to put into each quadrant. Think of this like an all-you-can-eat buffet. How much are you going to pile onto each section of your plate? Remember, the more you heap into the invest section, the more you need to scoop into the recover section. If you only want to be, you know, productive for like 30 minutes a day or 90 minutes a day, you probably don't need to worry too much about recovery because you're really not working that hard. But if you are trying to be highly productive, pulling off superhero feats of 9, 10, 11 plus productive hours a day, well, you really have to think about recovery in a serious way. And that naughty little gamble quadrant, regardless of how much time you're trying to be productive or have fun or whatever, we want to try to keep that gambling quadrant on the down low. You know, keep it on a little bit of a diet, not putting too much of that one on the plate, on our little buffet plate, right? Uh huh. Step two, make a list. I know, I know. It's like, oh, I don't want to make any more lists tonight. But trust me, this is easier than it sounds. Write down everything you spend time on regularly. Trust me, you're not that interesting. It's not as much as you think it is. Write down. You got your yoga stuff. Oh, I gotta do my exercise. I do this. And, you know, I gotta write my reports for work. I gotta do my homework at school. I'm scrolling through social media. Oh, I got my nightly TV binge watching. Got my video games. Write down your stuff. All right. Once you got that list, step three. Now it's time to play a little matchmaker. Pair up each activity on your list with its rightful quadrant. Some things will be clear cut. Hey, reading a heavy duty fact packed textbook. Well, clearly that's going into the invest quadrant all the way. But what about things that are a little bit of both? Say you're listening to an entertaining but informative podcast about history. You're having fun, but you're also learning. That could be a nice blend of the invest and spend quadrants. Step four. Now comes the fun part. Try to pick activities or optimize activities that will hit two or more desirable quadrants. It's like getting a two-for-one deal at your favorite store. The more desirable quadrants you can satisfy with one activity, the more you are winning at the game of time. Picture this, you've hit the middle of your workday and you feel like you are just stuck in quicksand. You need a little help getting out of that funk. Here's what you can do. Engage in some light to moderate exercise that you enjoy. This could be hitting the gym, taking a brisk walk, or maxing and relaxing in a sauna. These activities hit the recover quadrants because it's not too intense, but also the invest and spend quadrants. It's like killing three birds with one stone, but without all the death and blood. Can we take this already awesome activity and level it up? While on your walk, listen to an informative podcast to add a layer to the invest quadrant. Or listen to some killer tunes to add a layer to the spend quadrant. 
If you are into traditional video games, for example, why not try virtual reality games that require a little bit more rocking and rolling with your physical movement? VR games like Beat Saber, Ping Pong, Boxing, and Rock Climbing can add a fun twist to your gaming and exercise routine. Or how about placing a treadmill, bike, or rower in front of your TV? You can sculpt that Greek god physique of yours while watching TV. It's like having your cake and eating it too. Planning a hangout with a friend? Go for something that gets you both moving. Go to an amusement park. That's a place you'll definitely get your steps in. Challenge them to a game of tennis. Or how about some indoor rock climbing? And for those mundane tasks that don't require much brain power, you know what I'm talking about, like driving, cleaning, cooking, these are perfect opportunities to feed your brain with informative podcasts or audiobooks. Adding informative audio is one of the easiest, best overall ways to add productivity and value to your time. All right, here's the grand finale, the cherry on top of the Riggs Time Quadrant Sunday. Let's get multidimensional. It's time to bust out of our one-track mindsets. I know, I know, Knight, what are you talking about, this multidimensional? Let me explain. We often get into a tunnel vision of sorts. We think in one dimension. We think, okay, between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. I'm working, and then for one hour I go to the gym, I am exercising, and when I'm with my significant other, I am relaxing. But what if you could be doing more than one thing? It's kind of like juggling, except you never have to drop any balls. It's not exactly multitasking, it's just being more thoughtful about how you spend your time to optimize not for an individual activity or thing, not one area of your life, but to optimize for your overall life. For example, you might be the most productive when you are working completely alone, all isolated in your little zen space. But let's face it, all that solitude, if you're putting in long hours of work, you're going to be feeling like a lonely hermit. So, invite a friend, family member, one of your kids, a significant other, it doesn't matter who it is. Invite someone or even multiple people to co-work with you. Just having someone you can share space with really helps combat the loneliness that some people will feel if they are forced to work long hours all alone. Yes, you might be 5% less productive at the work, but the social interaction and emotional health benefits will make you feel like a million bucks. The trade-off is worth it when you are not optimizing for one thing in the very short term, but optimizing for your overall life in the long term. Plus, when you're not feeling so depressed and lonely, you can typically work longer hours. Consider this. You're at the gym, pumping iron, clanging and banging, ripping and rapping. As you bend over to pick up your weights, all the ladies check out your surprisingly toned, yet still hyper-masculine butt. Hey ladies, eyes up here. You got the high energy music blasting through your headphones. You are at maximum power. But what if you weren't? Yes, you could optimize 100% for the workout, but you're not getting any other value. What if you turned off that high energy music and turned on some information-based content. Maybe even like what you're listening to right now? Yes, your energy might dip 5%. Hey, maybe even 10%. 
But unless you're training for the Olympics, the trade-off for your life is well worth it because now you're at 90, 95% for exercise, but you are also at 90, 95% for learning. That is how you optimize for life. Now, let's talk about your late night TV binge. Dial down the brightness and pop on the blue light blocking glasses. Sure, your favorite TV show might be a couple percent less visually appealing, but your sleep quality will skyrocket. Would you rather have 100% TV enjoyment and poor sleep quality? You want to wake up feeling like you got hit by a truck or you want 95% TV enjoyment and you want to wake up like a rock star ready to conquer the world. Maybe that's a bad example. Rock stars probably don't get the best sleep, but you get the point I'm trying to say. We are not trying to optimize for one specific area. We are optimizing for our life. Your ultimate goal is not to go all in on one activity or one quadrant. It's to squeeze every drop of awesome out of life. So how can you spend your time in ways that give you a double whammy of present enjoyment and future benefit? Or, better yet, triple whammy it with immediate fun, future rewards, and recovery benefits. Before we wrap it up, make sure you wrap it up. Cause I'm talking about sex, baby. I'm talking about you and me. Yes, sex, the ultimate trifecta of fun. Immediate gratification, but not too immediate. I mean, we're not trying to launch the rocket before the countdown reaches zero, if you know what I'm saying. (laughs) Delayed gratification as sex is both exercise and relationship building and recovery. Sex before bed is an unbeatable sleep aid. Once I'm done and that light switch goes down, it ain't coming back up. I mean that in more ways than one. That light switch goes down, it's staying down. And there you have it. The Riggs Time Quadrant is your blueprint to maximizing every precious moment of your day. It's not just about getting more done. It's about living more, enjoying more, and being more. It's about crafting a life that's not just productive, but balanced, fulfilling, and downright exciting. Life is not a dress rehearsal. It's the real deal. Get out there and make every minute count. It is time to play the game of life like you are in it to win it. Let's go, champs! And remember... Live today with maximum power!